Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl and this is my Happy Handcraft Studio. Welcome to 2022. I'm looking forward to a great year of stitching and making things. I'm always very optimistic about how much I'm going to accomplish in a new year. So in today's Floss 2, I'm going to talk about all my stitching. And you can tell by the title that this is an unintentional whip parade because I have touched every whip that, um, that I have. Now for people who have followed me in the past, you know that I tend to have very few whips, but things change and we make the best of the circumstances we're in. And so I have a fair amount of whips to show you. And because I have so many, I'm not sure if I'll be mentioning all of the fabrics and flosses that I'm using, but I will list them in the description box below. So if you have any questions, you can look there. And then if the answer isn't in the box below, you can put a message in comments. I love hearing from you, so be sure to, to comment. So the reason for so many whips, I mentioned in my last video that, you know, Christmas was going to look a little bit different here and that I was going to have a few more whips than, than normal. I was going to start a few new things. And then as well, my whip go plan for 2022 included all new starts. Well, now they're not all new starts. Some of them will be continuations from what I started over the holiday season. And as well, I follow um, Sizuk Stitches and uh, Carolyn has a magazine monthly challenge group on Facebook. And for January, she had Bringo, a bingo board that had uh, 25 boxes with different prompts. And Previously, I only had like seven whips, so I wouldn't have had much luck with that. So using my um, choices that I've had for my uh, whip go board and bringo, I ended up with, I think, about 20 some whips right now, which is, which is great. So I'll give you a little glance at my January stitching journal. So you can see that every day I stitched on, oh, two, three, four, five different projects a day, which when you live in the foothills of Alberta in one of the really cold times of the year, it's great to have a focus for stitching. So I'm just going to go through my whips, starting with uh, my oldest to my newest whips. So I'm going to do focus this mainly on cross stitch, but I do have a knitting project and some of my best books of uh, 2021 to share with you. All right, so I'm going to start with my oldest whip that is pretty well finished. This is uh, Mitio 2021. This is a pattern by Jardin Privé, and it shows the high and low temperatures for 2021. I have just a few buttons that I'm going to sew on, and then I'm going to make this into something for my sewing room. This is a free pattern. And Jardin Privé has another new pattern for temperature this year, and it has um, like a flower garden theme. So if you think you might want to do a project that has to do with the temperature, you could look there. I love it. It's the first thing I do every day. I look at what the high and low temperature was the day before and for my region and fill it in like it 
it, to me, it's a really good start for the day. The next thing I do every morning is I work on my... It was originally a 25-7 project, so I would work on it 25 minutes a day, seven days a week. But with different projects I was working on for Bringo, 25 minutes just didn't work. I needed 30 minutes. So I started to do 30 minutes a day, seven days a week, on Watermelon Tourmaline by Carolyn Manning Designs. And I'm... I'm, I would say, half, halfway completed. I'm loving this, and it really does work well for 30 minutes a day. I can usually get, um, oh, two or three of these bigger diamond shapes completed. It's an easy project to pick up and put down. So that's working really well. And I, I look forward to it every day uh, to see just how much more I can accomplish. So on my Bringo board, and I'll show you what that looks like. I did get a blackout. I did do one hour of stitching on each of these projects. Um, you needed to do either 100 stitches or one hour. Now, some people, they did, like Carolyn, I think she does three hours on her different projects, but the requirement was an hour a day. So uh, the one that I'm going to show you first is called the Whip You Dread, and that is the sampler that I'm making for myself as I go. So when you see this, you'll see that it actually has less than what it had before because I did have a beautiful uh, wild rose border started here. But because I'm designing it as I go and I'm not using really a, um, an app or anything, it was too far over. So this one actually shows less than what I had before. But I will redo the border closer into the lettering. And I'm probably going to redo this um, part of this church as well because the black is too jarring. I'm going to find more of a gray color for the outline stitch. So you'll probably, there may be less to see the next time on my own designing of my sampler. It is giving me a real appreciation for people who design samplers. All right. My next whip is uh, Needlework Fairy. And Needlework Fairy was a start that I did uh, on my mother's birthday. In memory of her, this is a Jim Shore Mill Hill kit. And that one is coming along just great. Hopefully I'll be able to use this in some future challenges. And then my next one is Real Comfort. This is the Jane Austen Sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery. And this is on my Silk app, so I can follow this one and um, see my progress. I think I'm about 40% at this point. I love the... Uh, the saying on this, uh, there's nothing like staying at home for real comfort, especially if you are a stitcher. That works just great. I started this for Black Sampler November. And I'm going to continue working on that one. And so my next whip is called Noble Companions. And this is Noble Companions. I love this one, but it's a difficult one because of the linen I have being very uneven. The pattern for Noble Companions is from this um, older Leisure Arts book. This is from 1991. 
but I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the pattern. You can see. So I'm just kind of in this area here. And I'm looking forward to continuing to work on that. I really like to have a, a Christmas piece that is more involved. That's uh, going to take a while. So that was Noble Companions. And then my next one is my 2021 Prairie Schooler Santa. And that's, that's coming along. Of course, I love the owl. That's probably my favorite part of it. And I have two other Prairie Schooler patterns at this point that I have ready to go in my bag. Right, and then I have what's called Santa Cones. And I have just the black and white picture. So I'm making um, this style here into a cone. So I've got just that little amount so far. And that will be a stand up when it's finished. So that pattern, the Santa Cones, that was my new start for Christmas Eve. And so I had that one started. And then for Christmas Day, I started Dancer by Barbara Anna Designs. And then I think I worked on this one other time on Bringle for Favorite Fabric. I love the fabric on that one. The fabric is a 32 count Lugana charcoal. And I'm hoping there'll be prompts coming up that I can get back to that one. And then I have a start and a finish. This was called uh, The Robin's Gift. This is in the Just Cross Stitch Magazine Ornaments 2021. And I did it on an Oatmeal Floba Zweigart. And uh, maybe I'll have that one finished. I'll put that on the side here. I'll have that one finished for my next floss too. That'd be great. All right, my big start for the year. And I started this uh, January 1st. I'm going to do Hoity Toity. And here is my progress so far. Um, which way does it go? Like this. And I'm really, really enjoying working on this. Um, I like the blocks of color and how it goes together. I think this will also be a good um, piece to have for different prompts because there's, there's fruits and there's birds and there's houses and bowls and all kinds of different things that I might be able to use for a prompt. So this is one that I hope to work on every day because it is... It's a huge piece. I think this has probably already, you know, 10, 15 hours into it. So it's going to take a while, but that's a good thing. I love having the time to put into it. So Hoity Toity Long Dog Sampler. I have a new weather piece. And this one is called Temperature Library. Let me just show you this. So temperature library. Uh, and this is by uh, Christie's Corner. It's available on Etsy. 
And so what I decided to do for this is that the main part of the book is the high temperature for the day. And then the little band on the book is the low temperature of the day. Now this, um, if you go to Christie's Corner, she has a new one for this year, 2022. And I haven't looked at it closely, but I saw another stitcher talking about it. Each month has an extra little design that has to do with the month. Um, so I think like in October, maybe there's a skull sitting on the, the shelf. Uh, maybe for Valentine's Day, there'd be a heart sitting on the shelf. That, that kind of idea. But I'm enjoying it. Uh, you know, just enough stitching for the day. Uh, it's not, that's, that's what I'm working on now every morning. So I start with that before I do the uh, watermelon tourmaline pattern. Okay, another piece that I had just a beginning start was called Woodland Christmas. So this is what it's going to look like. And I have just a, a small start for that. This one um, is in, again, just cross stitch uh, Christmas Ornaments 2021. All right. Next up was Merry Christmas Ornament. Now this is also on my Whip Go board. I'll have it here. So I needed to put five hours into this. And this is a free pattern by White House Stitchery. I really love the the color of the fabric, and I like that red and white border. So that shouldn't take just too long to finish. And I'll show you it on my whip go board. So here it was on my whip go board. I did five hours, and I also did five hours on my newest whip to complete that bowl. And I completed the Robin's Gift and five hours on a seasonal whip. So I look back, look forward to getting back to that little stitch. Again, White House Stitchery, and it's a free one. My next one, I didn't get very much done on it. Goes this direction. This is Holy Night. And Holy Night is a Barbara Anna design. And it's in the 2019 Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching magazine. This is on a 32 count Lugana dove gray. And I'll show it to you here. This is what it's going to look like finished. And this one was just called today for whip go for February. So I'll put another five hours into that. Oh, my next one is another really big one. This is from Fox and Rabbit Designs, their Mystery 22. Mystery 2022 Sal. So last year, if you were following me, you saw I did Talavera all year. Well, this one is called Changing Seasons. And there's, if you can look at, see the outline, there is going to be sort of four blocks. I don't think I have. No, I don't have what they've given so far. But what I'm using is a 32 count Belfast linen. And I'm just working on the outer border 
I don't even know if I'm a quarter finished yet. But I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Um, I'm just going to continue to work on the border as different parts are called. Hopefully, um, there'll be something to work on before I get to the center part. Because there's an outside border and then an inside border with four squares. So, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll just continue on as I need to for that, that project. Uh, Fox and Rabbit, their project used to be called Linens and Threads, but now they're, they're putting everything, I think, under their Fox and Rabbit, um, name. So I decided to join the Jeanette Douglas, um, mini bouquet stitch along. And so I have the very first one done. You can find these patterns on her website. And so each month there'll be a new little design. And I think, I'm not sure if I'm going to do um, a little pillow for each month or if I'll do a little flat fold that will go on to a piece where I can change them up monthly. I'm not sure. I'll uh, just continue to work on them until I get an idea. They're all going to be on this fabric, which is uh, just from Michael's. It's an even weave, 28 count tea dyed. And then another new start for me is called Spring 1881. And this again was from um, 2020 Spring Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine. This is from Twin Pink, Twin Peak Primitives. And I got a start on this one because for Bringle, they wanted uh, a piece that reminded you of your childhood. And I love the book called The Country Bunny. And that reminded me of this. This is a, an unknown linen. It's a really slubby oatmeal color. And I should get uh, some good progress on this because this one was called for this month. So I'll get five hours into this piece. So five hours, that should, that should be a good amount, I would think. And I have it in my Eastery bag that I made last year. And my newest start and something new for me is from Peppermint Purple. Peppermint Purple does um, a yearly black work stitch along. And so this is what I've done so far. So this is a weekly stitch along, which is kind of nice. You get one of these blocks every week and that's easy to accomplish. You know, that doesn't take, um, I don't, not even an hour. So what I've been doing is, you know, I've found a starting point. I'm working on my borders in, I have just about all of the 52 blocks in. And so I'll work on this, you know, every day or so. And, um, and then weekly I'll put in the little block. Pick a tissue here. Okay, so that, as you can see, is a lot of stitching. Here, I'll show you what the um, front cover looks like for this uh, sow. Now, for free... For a free pattern, they give um, a variety of shapes and colorways. This is the colorway that I'm doing. and um, But you can also join. I'm not sure what the cost is. And then you can choose other outside borders and different shapes for the inside as well. I really enjoy this, and I think that maybe next time I will uh, purchase... Uh, 
some more, you know, to appreciate what the designer has given to our stitching community. Okay, so plans for stitching. Well, I have Whipgo. I have these two pieces that I'll be working on. I have my stitch along. So there's the changing seasons from Fox and Rabbit. There's the black work cell from Peppermint Purple. I have the Jeanette Douglas mini bouquet that I'll work on. And I have Hoity Toity. So I have those that I'll be working and my watermelon tourmaline and temperature library. So those are all pieces that I'll just be working on the almost daily, I would say. And then I also have from Magazine Monthly Challenge, next month will be yummy. So the theme is food. So I'll be able to probably use hoity-toity for that because there's lots of food. And I'll find a whip for each of these letters. And then it's going to be Olympics month. And so I'm going to follow the Stitch the Winter Olympics that the Naptime Stitcher came up with. This is on her Instagram account. So for example, on the first day opening ceremonies, you get a new start or something you started in 2022. So I have lots that I can do for that. And then the next one, Winter Olympics, stitch something related to winter. I've got that covered. And then the next one is the Olympic rings, stitch with a color from the Olympic rings, either blue, yellow, black, green, or red. Again, that's, that's an easy one. And I'll probably try to do at least an hour for each of these, just to um, take part. It's, it's really fun to be part of a community that's, that's working on different projects. So that is my cross stitch. And I love it. I, you know, I cross stitch hours every day in between some of my other um, commitments and projects. So I'm going to show you some of the knitting I've done. So it w it was brutally cold here, um, you know, like minus minus 37 degrees Celsius uh, as a low temperature in the in the nighttime. And so you'll understand this if you're Canadian. Canadians in winter we have different coats. We have our light coat that, you know, uh, breaks the wind a bit, gives you an extra layer. And then we have our winter coat that's, you know, a little bit heavier. It might have a hood. This is for, uh, you know, you're going to be outside for a little while. And then you have your winter coat that if my car stops and I'm not wearing this coat, I could die. <laughs> like it's, it's, I have a full length down coat that um, when it gets that cold and I do have to go out, that's the coat I wear. Well, I didn't have a hat that matched. So I thought, you know, you need a hat to go with your save your life winter coat. And so this is the hat that I made and I, I love I love this hat it, it's very um, it was easy uh, the pattern is called March hat and it's by Megan Bobbin ba Babin on Ravelry it's a free pattern and I made this one for myself it the pom-pom is just excessive like it's it's wonderful you know, it almost takes the hat off your head. It's so big, but you know, what else do you do with leftover yarn? I liked it so much that I'm going to make it again. This, this is called Heartland. It's available at Michael's here in Canada. Heartland um, premium acrylic 
yarn. And this colorway for the hat I made was called Wolf Trap, which I wasn't crazy about the name, you know, but anyways. Uh, so then I pick up this bluish one and I'm going to make another hat, same pattern, the March hat for our Ujama Grandma Bags Babies and Beyond event that will be in October. And this colorway is called Voyager. So now I see, okay, there's kind of a Canadian historical um, colorways happening here. So I'm... I'll get this one started up in the next day or so, and I'll show you my progress. Again, a really, really nice pattern, I think, for a hat. Uh, this hat you can wear with the long band, or you can um, roll up the, you know, if, if you are actually out in the terrible cold and you need more of a layer around your ears, that would work. All right, so that was my knitting. I have done lots of quilting and other sewing. I'll save that for the next uh, floss tube. But finally, books. I didn't know that the last three books that I would read in 2022 would be some of my best, my favorite books of 2022. So, one of the last books I read was called With Malice, and this is by Eileen Cook. This is the story of a young woman who wakes up in hospital and can't remember the last six weeks and finds out that um, while she was in Italy on a school trip, her best friend was killed. And we find out that she is being looked into as the main suspect, suspect. What's so interesting about this book is the social media that goes around it. So there's the narrative of this story. Plus there are the police reports from different witnesses of the accident from uh, different people that were on the trip with um, these two young girls. And um, then what social media picks up, you know, different news reports, different social media organizations that kind of get on the bandwagon of this crime and the, how also how social media affects the families of the two girls. So that that was really, really good. A real, you know, you want to keep reading to find out you know, who done it or what really did happen in the story. The next book that I really enjoyed was called The Clay Girl. And this is a Canadian author Heather Tucker, um, who, before she was an author, worked as a psychiatric nurse and bereavement counselor. So, you know, you can see some of that in this book. Um, this is the story of a young girl uh, her, whose name is Harriet, and she lives in a very dysfunctional family with uh, five other sisters. Uh, it's a hard read for anyone who comes from a home where there's either emotional or physical or sexual abuse. But it is definitely a, a story of hope and a story of good people in our world and how people can be a real influence and benefit to anyone who's struggling. I thought it was just a great book. And again, you know, you really wanted to keep reading. There is a sequel to this book called Cracked Pots. I'm always worried about 
reading the sequel of a, of a book that I've really enjoyed. Um, you know, you, you, you have high expectations that, you know, maybe may not be fulfilled. But again, um, I'll, I will probably I look forward in the, in the future. Uh, so, The Clay Girl. And then finally, The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich. I'm not sure how this got onto my list. I think probably because I'm interested in reading from the Indigenous point of view. I think that's an area that that we all need to, um, to become more aware of, for sure. And so... I, I read The Night Watchman, and this is based on the author's grandfather, who was an Indigenous um, person who worked as a night watchman in a factory that was uh, built to uh, help the Indigenous people of that area uh, have employment. And he's one of the main characters, and he's working to um, make sure that the, the rights of his people are not terminated by Congress. And so this happens in the 1950s, and it's based on his real fight. Uh, he goes to Washington to be sure that his peoples continue to have rights to both land and their identity. And then we also follow Pixie, uh, Parento, uh, Patrice, a young woman who is trying to find her own identity and also trying to find her sister, Vera, who has disappeared. Vera went to the big city of Minneapolis, pregnant, and has disappeared. And so she goes to find out more about her sister Vera. Wonderful characters in this book. And like I said, I loved it. It was my favorite book of 2021. And then I go to find out more about the book and find out that it actually did win the Pulitzer Prize for 2021. Um, you, you just you just never never know uh, I might have stayed away from it if I found out it was a Pulitzer Prize winner book thinking that maybe it wasn't as readable as it was but it was really really a great book there's also parts in it about the residential school experience that for for all of us and especially for Canadians is definitely a topic that we all need to learn more about and have a better understanding. So yeah, it was, I, I would definitely recommend the book. I'm also currently reading, or just, yeah, I'm currently reading uh, Louise Erdrich's book, The Sentence, which again followed, follows the Indigenous experience of um, current lives. Uh, the, uh, the author and her family run a bookstore, and this is a fictional account, but based on, you know, uh, Indigenous people who run a bookstore during COVID. And there's a lot of uh, kind of supernatural events that happen with the Indigenous experience as part of it. Again, a really, really interesting book. All right, so I hope that you are all happily stitching away. I'd love to hear about what you're stitching and what you are reading and what you're looking forward to in 2022. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.